Hello, my name is Jimmy and welcome. These are two wagons dressed up as SUVs to trick you to buying them. This is the 2022 Mercedes-Benz E450 All-Terrain and this is the 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country. Before I get started, I really, really wished I could have gotten the Audi A6 All-Road because it would have just completed this collection. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get one. No local dealers had one in stock and I asked how long it would take to get one. The wait was six months and I just couldn't wait six months. Speaking of dealers, I do want to thank Mori Volvo for lending me this Volvo V90. If you're in the greater Vancouver area, do check them out. And they have a wide selection of Volvos and used cars as well. So do take a look at them. Information is in the description down below. As these are two luxury wagons, we do have to talk a little bit about pricing first. As tested, the Mercedes is $94,100, while the Volvo is $75,700. While it's certainly not cheap, there is a significant savings by going with the Volvo. Both of these vehicles aren't new. They're both introduced back in 2017, so buyers have a higher riding wagon. Sadly today, the wagons that these are based on are discontinued. You can no longer purchase the standard E-Class or V90 here in Canada. I do know in other markets it's a little bit different, but here in North America, SUVs are just taking over. That being said, I do know there's still a small percentage of people who prefer these long roof wagons. So let's take a look at these a little bit more in depth. Styling is completely subjective, so I'll let you tell me exactly how you feel. But I wanna talk a little bit about the Mercedes here first. The front end on this Mercedes is distinctively Mercedes, right? You got the three-pointed star in the center, the multi-beam LED headlights, and a lot of chrome on the bottom, which Mercedes calls it a skid plate, but let's not fool anyone here. That's far from a skid plate. Moving on to the side though, we got these 19-inch wheels. This car as specced as should actually get 21-inch wheels, but because it is in the winter right now, we got winter tires with these 19s. You got fender flares to make it look a little bit more off-roady. They go along the bottom sill and to the rear as well. Bunch of chrome on the side. You can black that out if you want with the AMG night package. And then out back, integrated roof spoiler on top, LED tail lights, a bunch of chrome, and the integrated exhaust tips on the bottom. It's not a bad package overall, but let's just take a quick peek at that Volvo to compare. The Volvo is definitely more traditional. It's more squared off and you can tell by the lines all on the side here. It's, well, a little bit more stronger than the kind of more flowing lines that you get on the Mercedes. We do have an upright grille, these beautiful Thor LED headlamps. And instead of going with just chrome, there's a satin look on the bottom, which I personally do like. And then if we take a look at the side here, 21 inch wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0. These tires are 220 tread wear. Yeah, they're like summer tires on a cross country. Like it doesn't make sense, but I absolutely love them. Standards are 19s, but I mean, if you really want to go big or go home, of course you can get these 21 inch wheels. Fender flares along the side, those look great. Along the sills on the bottom and blacked out surrounds on the side. Out back, we have the roof top spoiler, which look absolutely great. This glass line is a lot more sloped than the Mercedes and we'll see why that's a disadvantage later on when we get inside the trunk. But I must say these LED tail lamps, they're absolutely beautiful. The way that they turn on and off, like they're just the best. Let's move to the inside starting with the trunk. Both are similar in terms of opening and depth. Where we see a difference here is the Mercedes can hold 35 cubic feet compared to the 25.5 in the Volvo. This is mostly due to the angle of the rear glass. For everyday use under the tunnel cover, I would say they're pretty similar. If you want a little bit more space, of course, you can fold the rear seats down. Mercedes has the 40-20-40 split, making it easier to carry longer items while still carrying four passengers. The Volvo does have a pass-through in the center, but it is a little bit smaller and harder to access when comparing to the Mercedes configuration. Mercedes has another trick in its trunk. Here, we actually find a rear-facing bench. But here's the thing. There's a max height of 115 centimeters. And if you look in the owner's manual, it states that the max age is six years old. Rules vary depending on where you live, but here in Vancouver, technically these are useless. At someone at this age and weight should be using a booster. And there are no boosters at the time of filming that are certified to be used in the rearward facing configuration. 
Over in the Volvo, we don't get these rear bench. However, in older Volvos, we actually did. But what we do find in here is the storage area. You'll find a spare tire and a little bit of space here. I really do like how Volvo added a strut in here to make it easier to access this space. At least it's useful. But let's check out those rear seats. In terms of numbers, you're splitting hairs here as both vehicles offer similar space. But where you can see the biggest difference is with child seats. I'm a certified passenger safety technician, so these seats are installed properly and safely. As you can see, an infant seat here fits perfectly on the Volvo's driver's side, and a bulkier rear-facing seat has no problems fitting in here as well. No issues whatsoever, but if I move over into the Mercedes, things are not the same. Space for me is absolutely fine. Headroom, legroom, all is good. The problem is, if you are putting child seats in here with the infant seat in place, I did have to move the driver's seat forward. Same thing with the passenger. And as you can see, a side-by-side -side here, that in the Volvo, there's certainly a lot more space compared to the Mercedes. As for the front seats, well, they're absolutely great. Both of these vehicles have heated seats, but they lack the cooling and massaging seats that you can find in the optional packages. For the Volvo, that's 3850. For the Mercedes, that's 5600. So you are gonna be paying a little bit more to get all the features that you want. However, as they are right now, they're superbly comfortable. And I do appreciate the three-stage heating that both the seat and the steering wheel comes with. Speaking of the steering wheel, it's quite simple and easy to use. There isn't too much that's labeled on the steering wheel, which is a little confusing at first, but once you get used to it, I actually really like it. Behind, a full digital cluster. It's very, very simplistic. It only shows you really your speed and what gear you're in. It can show the map in the center as well, and that's powered through the Google Map system. It looks great, and it just shows you what you need, nothing more. Above, heads-up display, exactly the same. Only it really shows you your speed. As for the infotainment, fully updated. The screen size is a little bit small in today's standard, but I mean, it's backed by Android OS, so you have everything that you need. Google Maps, Google Assistant, you can install apps on it. It's really a great system overall. You can be like, tell me a joke. Here's a joke for Valentine's Day. What's the best kind of triangle to ask out on a date? A cute triangle. Ah. Perfect. I mean, why wouldn't you want your $80,000 vehicle to tell you a joke every now and then? We're gonna test that in the Mercedes in a bit and see if it can do the same. But the only downfall here is there's no CarPlay or Android Auto, at least at the time of filming. They did mention that it's gonna be an over-the-air update, maybe a little bit later on, but for now, we just don't have that feature. Overall, the interior is a really nice place to be. All the materials is great, the leather is good, the wood is absolutely beautiful as well. It's a very simple interior. And you know, some people like that. It's a Scandinavian way, isn't it? You get a Qi wireless charger in the center, which is nice, a very good Bowers and Wilkins audio system as well. But I mean, if you want something a little bit more flashy, I guess we gotta head in to the Mercedes. Because inside this Mercedes, you get all the glitz and glamour you really want. I mean, just check out this beautiful piano black plastics that's everywhere. It's, well, scratch prone and dust prone. You better have a microfiber handy and be ready to clean it basically all the time. But what you can do is you can opt for eight other options of this interior trim. So you can really make it your own. Seats, they're just as comfortable, I would say. There are a little bit more adjustments in here than in the Volvo, but like I said, if you step up to the top trim on both of these, they're gonna be very, very similar. In front, this steering wheel is updated with a lot of different types of buttons on it. It can get a little confusing when you're brand new into it, but over time, it shouldn't be that bad. Same thing with the cluster. I love Mercedes clusters because it shows you so much and it's infinitely, at least almost infinitely adjustable. You can have everything that you want, but the only thing is because there's so much that it can display, it's a little confusing. So, you know, before you get going, configure it, do what you need to do before setting off because that is a major distraction. Same thing with the heads up display and the infotainment. There's just so much you can do with any of these systems. The infotainment here, just like the Volvo, it is a full touchscreen, so you can reach for it, but as you're driving, it's a little bit far. But what's nice is you can use this little trackpad on the steering wheel or the trackpad down in the center. So there are different ways that you can interact with the system itself. But unlike the Android operating system that's in the Volvo, when you ask Mercedes to tell you a joke, 
Tell me a joke. Nope, that's that's just a radio station. Tell me a joke. I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? Tell me a joke. <laughs> it just puts on a radio station. It's definitely nowhere near as good as Google Assistant. I mean, it's built in, it's not connected. So that is definitely one downfall. Volvo gives you a subscription to that service for four years. They didn't really say what happens after the four years though, but at least for the first four years, you know you're connected to full LTE and you have, well, a connection from your car to all the satellites. So you have Google Maps, Google Assistant, everything that you really need. But at least in here, you have CarPlay and Android Auto. But let's take a quick peek underneath the hood before we get going. Under the hood, these are quite different, but also quite similar. The Mercedes uses a 3.0-liter inline-six with a mild hybrid tech, making 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. Power is fed through a 9-speed automatic to all four wheels. On the other hand, Volvo has a turbocharged 2.0-liter turbo four that also has an electric supercharger and mild hybrid tech, making 295 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. All that is fed through an 8-speed gearbox to all four wheels but let's go for a drive. All right, on the road with the Mercedes first, the first thing you're gonna notice is the engine. It's a very powerful, silky, smooth inline six. I actually have the exact same engine in the E450 convertible that I reviewed. Love the engine in that as well. I mean, same thing. This has a little bit more weight, but it doesn't feel like it's lugging around too much. It's just so smooth and it's silent. Like you're driving around right now on city streets, can barely hear that engine, but when you need to accelerate, <laughs> it can go. There's no problems with this engine. I have absolutely zero problems with it. On paper, actually, it matches the four cylinder in terms of fuel economy that's in the Volvo, but that's on paper. In real life, I did find that the Volvo is able to meet those numbers a lot easier than in this. What I can say is, well, the driving feel of the E450, it's definitely a little bit more sporty. Even if you have it in normal mode, the steering just provides a little bit more feedback. The suspension is a little bit more taut. I mean, with this, you do have full air suspension. And if you do go into the off-road mode, it actually lifts up your ride height a little bit to give you well, a little bit more of that ground clearance. But even at the highest ride height that's found in the E450's air suspension, it's no match to the V90's well, eight inches of ground clearance that it comes with. So if you are looking for a higher riding like wagon, the V90 definitely has the win there. What I can say is both of these vehicles are ultra smooth for the start stop. Because they both have mild hybrid tech, it's, it really is a vast change in the automotive industry. Sure, I mean like hybrids and electric vehicles are, are great, they really are, but mild hybrid makes so much of this engine and this drivetrain just bearable to be you know, living with every day. Because most vehicles that you buy day to day now, they have the auto start stop. When you come to a red light, the engine automatically stops, which is normal. But what happens is when that engine stops, it's, well, it's very abrupt when it needs to start again. It, well, it just feels like the engine's just starting again, like from cold. It's not the smoothest, it's not the quickest. But with mild hybrid tech, it uses a very different type of starter. And well, it's not, it's actually like a like generator starter kind of two in one module. Think of it as just like a motor. And because of that, when you lift off the throttle, it's so smooth. Both of the vehicle does the exact same thing. It's not just starting from like a red light, starting from like cold. Both of these vehicles, just the smoothest start. And I love that. It really is, well, it's just a great experience. It really is. In terms of safety tech, both of these vehicles have you covered. The Mercedes has a really good adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, radar guided cruise, said that already, but like it has all the things that you need and it works really well. It is part of an optional package, but it is something I do generally recommend you go with if you're gonna be driving longer distances or even like in towns. Because if you're day-to-day -day commuting in like city traffic, 
that automatic start-stop cruise control can just keep you within your lane, start and stop when the vehicle in front of you is doing the same thing. It just follows the vehicle in front. It's definitely a good point. But let's take a quick peek at the Volvo to see what that's like. All right, on the road with the Volvo V90. Yes, there's definitely a lack in power because there's 67 less horsepower in this and 59 pound-feet of torque comparing to the E450. I mean, it's not like a huge difference, but it's enough to feel it. Absolutely, it is. However, here's the thing. If you're drag racing these side by side, yes, the E450 is going to be faster. But how the algorithm on the engine as well as transmission in the Volvo means acceleration, it's quite quick. Because when you dip into the throttle, it picks up and it picks up fast. Because underneath that hood, that turbocharged, supercharged, and mild hybrid tech of an engine, it's a marvel of engineering. I mean, yes, the T8 is even better and there's more things to it, but this B6 is really, really good. That supercharger is no longer a regular supercharger, so it doesn't zap power to create power like most supercharger does. I mean, it still does, but it's electronically powered, so it uses less of the engine's power to create more power. There's a lot of power in that sentence, but what you have to know is because of it, it's more efficient and it's a lot smoother than before. And just like the E450, that mild hybrid tech, it's simply amazing. When you're coming to a stop, like it, it's just, it's so seamless to get the vehicle back up and running. It's amazing, this technology, and I really, really do like it. In terms of the safety features, of course, Volvo has you fully covered. There's everything that you need, pedestrian warning, radar guided cruise control, like everything. And it works really well. Like you can take your hands off the wheel for a little bit and it won't freak out at you. It's able to just keep itself within the lanes. And it's a full start stop. So even in city traffic, it can do what it needs to do. It's a really good system overall. And I mean, it's just simple and easy to use. It's just a few buttons right on the steering wheel itself. Driving them back to back certainly differentiates them, and so does the price. The Mercedes starts at $80,000, while the Volvo, well, it tops out at that exact same spot. While you can tack on options to the Mercedes as much as $100,000, well, you definitely will be saving quite a bit more at Volvo. For most, leasing these vehicles will be the best option. At the time of filming, the Volvo will cost you $1,064, while the Mercedes is $1,625 for a low kilometer three year lease. That's over $20,000 in savings during the duration of the lease itself. It's certainly something to think about if you're interested in either of these vehicles. Overall for me, if I had to pick, I really would have loved the E63S AMG wagon. I mean, 600 horsepower, how can I say no to that? But comparing these two here, the E450 and the V90, I would have to say the V90 checks every single box that I need. Sure, it's not as quick as the E450 and the engine note isn't as good, but the four cylinder is better on fuel. The interior, there's more space. And just overall, I like the looks of this over the E450. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. Like the video if you do, subscribe if you wanna see more. Let me know what your thoughts are on these wagons in the comment section down below, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.